Hey guys, what's up? Mopart's Webshop again. Um, today I'll be showing you another project we've been working on. Um, it's for this green bike. Uh, it's the Simonini 4 stud engine, the new type engine. Um, with a Fabrizio exhaust, side intake, 21mm carb. That may be changed later for a 24 flat slide, depending on how well this performs. Um, yeah, so this cylinder, for the ones who know this engine, the cylinder... Um, we're going to be using the stock cylinder that came with it. Haven't tuned it yet. We will later. Uh, the cylinder head, as may, some of you may know, it doesn't have a decompression valve in it, so uh, we we went ahead and fixed that. I remember a friend of mine in the States, Terry Dean Kane, he uh, said that he used a Honda Camino head on his. Um, and uh, yeah, we did that as well. Um, but we also wanted to try uh, putting a decompression valve into the stock you know uh, stock cylinder head that came with this kit and we did that as well so we're gonna compare what works better because obviously the the Camino one isn't isn't a standard straight fit you have to adjust a little more and um, yeah so uh, in my eyes the the Simonini head we modified it looks good and it looks promising it should work and that's what we're gonna test today so we're gonna see whether we can get it started just a few more specs for this engine um, so it's a four stud new type engine it's different from the uh, old one. The old one had three studs. Um, both pretty cool engines though, I must say. This one, this timing, uh, the ports and this one are sick. They're pretty insane. I'm, I'm pretty curious to see how it runs. We're still running the standard uh, well, standard stock 21mm round slide carb. We're going to switch to a 24 flat slide probably in the future. Uh, Fabrizio exhaust, as I said. Um, and one change we made was, as I do with pretty much any engine is uh, well internal rotor system um, the ignition the stock ignition that came with this Simonini kit I think it's just rubbish it's like some something that came off a scooter uh, a stock scooter and it, it doesn't it, it can't handle the, the high RPMs that this engine wants to produce and it, it can fail and it does fail I've seen it fail before so that's why we we didn't even start it with that uh, ignition we just said fuck it throw that shit away and well here's the HPI um, same one we have on the Sprocati engines we are running. Uh, you can set it up for two curves, as I've explained before. And yeah, so this should definitely uh, work a lot better. Um, this one will be run with a variomatic system as well. And also what we call a hybrid clutch system. Uh, you know, that's the one from a, so we're using a clutch off a scooter with a, uh, with an adjusted shaft. I have the shaft here. So the difference between uh, the standard variomatic shaft you have in your in your hub and this one is well basically this is the one off a pulley assembly and this is one adjusted for a scooter clutch and uh, what happened here is you basically press fit the top part of the scooter uh, shaft into the bottom part of the stock uh, transmission and yeah so that'll uh, should should let us transmit the power from the engine to the wheel a lot better and so yeah here we are ready to assemble the four stud new type Simonini engine and let me just walk you through the cylinder heads quickly here on the right we have a Honda Camino Honda Hobbit head uh, which already has a built-in decompression valve system so you could you should be able to push start it with this head Obviously, this head didn't it didn't come like this. We had to uh, open up the um, stud holes and widen them. Um, we had to clear the distance. They were, th I think, on about 48 millimeters uh, heart to heart. We had to make them 50 so that they can fit in the engine. Um, yeah, like I said, already has a decompression valve, and uh, so yeah, that's one option for this uh, for this new type engine. The option we chose for, you know, this is a reserve. The Honda one, the option we chose for is to adjust the stock head, the standard head that, you know, came with this kit. And um, for the ones who know this engine, you don't have the decompression valve in it. It comes without one, so you, you're you going to have a hard time starting it. And you can start it with a drill or some kind of starting mechanism. Or you can try to push start it. I've seen it, it, I've seen it done before. You can push start it, but you look ridiculously stupid running around with your bike like that. So why not make it easy and just, um, yeah build a decompression valve in it that's what we did all we had to do is remove one fin the center fin so that shouldn't give us any problems with cooling 
And uh, yeah, the way this system works is uh, you put a cable in and you uh, tie the cable on the back and when you pull the cable, it basically pushes the decompression pin inwards like so and then it decompresses. Not sure whether you can see that, there you go. So you adjust the cable, you push it in and then it decompresses. This uh, system should work. Uh, we haven't tested it yet, it's what we're going to try to do now, so we're going to assemble it and test it and uh, try to start the engine. So bear with me. Right, so in this tutorial video I'll just quickly show you how you can set up the HPI internal rotor system. Um, you gotta set it up um, in such a way that uh, it lines up with the second largest uh, marking which is this one. So you got number one here and you gotta get it to the second one. And you want that to line up with the one the stripe furthest on the left, because there's two stripes, this one on the left, this one on the right. So again, second largest line with a left line on the rotor. If you're running an engine that um, turns to the left, you gotta do the same thing on the other side. So the line on the rotor on the right with the second largest line on the stator. Now, I don't know whether this has been set up already, I'm just gonna take it off again so that we can uh, make sure that it is set up properly. Manual says set it up between 3 to 5 millimeters before top that center. So what are we gonna do? I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna go for three millimeters. Um, in order to take off the rotor, you need a rotor removal tool. I have this Bazzetti one. Um, you need a piston stop, and uh, finally to uh, adjust the timing, you need a uh, micrometer. All these things are available on my web shop or any other web shop. So what we're going to start by doing is uh, installing the rotor removal tool. Your rotor has threads in them. And uh, well, you put these bolts into the rotor, both sides equally. Then you have your center sorry your center tool right here which has to align with the crankshaft and now you can loosen it but before you do all that you gotta install your piston stop once the piston stop is installed take your allen key and turn your rotor to the right this bolt turns down, pulling up the rotor. So that's what we did now. The rotor is fixed conically, not with a wood rough key, it's just conically fixed into place. Um, no, your rotor will not spin out of control or spin out, out of its conical position if you're running an engine like this. Um, so yeah, there we have the rotor loose. Now we can go to the next step, which is the timing and the placement of the rotor in accordance to the two lines I was just talking about. So yeah, this is uh, the rotor. Um, the left one, as I said before, the left line has to uh, align with the, with the second largest line on the stator. That should be... can you see it? Right there. Right, the second one. Um, how do you know which one is left, which one is right? Well, you got the HPI logo in the center and the one on the left has to line up with this one, the, two, the second line there. Let's go ahead and install it. Alright, now... Um, what you want to do is uh, take your micrometer and uh, well, put it in your cylinder head. Like so. I think this is an aftermarket micrometer, it's not even the one from Bozzetti. Bozzetti have nicer ones, this one is actually pretty horrible quality. I have a Bozzetti one somewhere else, can't find it, so that's why I'm using this one, but it works just as well. Alright, so what you want to do is... Uh, get it aligned. Check this out. You got a line 
on the primary shaft. By the primary shaft, I mean this part right here. This part can move around. Let's just call that the secondary shaft. And inside the secondary shaft, going through primary and secondary, you have the pen. And this will go up and down later as the piston goes up and down to top that center. So line that up to zero. And then you can turn your crankshaft to make the piston go up to top that center. Check this out. When I turn it to the right, the pen pushes out. See? And to the right. And it comes out. The point that it can't reach any further, that's where it's at top that center. So right there. And you tighten the bolt on the side. Now that you've tightened the bolt on the side, which holds the pen into place, you want to go in three millimeters. By doing, you do that by simply turning to the right three times, crossing zero three times. So that's one. Two, and that's three. Now we're in three millimeters, so if the piston goes up, it'll stop. Hear that? Three millimeters before top that center. And this is the point where you want the line to line up with that line, the second line. So that's what we're gonna do now. So install that carefully. Alright, so now we're in three millimeters before top that center. Both lines are aligned properly. This is how they should look. First, second line, straight. Um, it can be that your rotor is still not chronically in place, meaning that it can still turn around the crankshaft without the crankshaft moving. So tighten this, put a variomatic on it or a clutch or whatever and get, get that tightened down so that it really sits in place. See, this is what I mean. This, this rotates, but the crankshaft doesn't. So you want to get that tightened. Um, that's basically it. After this you can take out all your tools, and, uh, install your spark plug and see whether, uh, whether your engine runs. Alright, so uh, we have everything mocked up. Simonini 4 stud engine, internal rotor works. I just started it up um, with the engine out of the cradle. Now I put it in the cradle, in the subframe. And we're gonna see whether we can get it started. <laughs> seems to work pretty well. Uh, the compression valve seriously seems to be working so I'm really happy about that. It's not leaking either. I was first scared that it may be, I don't know, maybe that after machining it that some air, some compression may escape through the front but it, it's, it's super tight, it's super sealed so yeah the system seems to work so I'm quite happy about that. And uh, makes a lot of noise actually. It sounds like it really wants to go. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this project, so stay tuned and I'll uh, update you as soon as possible.